Today in Trove News, we're going to take a look at India's east coast. It's an oil and gas hotspot. So if you're looking at the east coast of India, then a great place to start is with TGS's 2D Cube project. Now, this was prepared for the bid round, the OALP 1X, or 9 as we like to call it. And it's a coverage of all the offshore east coast blocks. But maybe it's not just the east coast offshore blocks you want to be looking at, perhaps... You want to be looking at the stratigraphy for many different basins and you can see here's one stratigraphic scheme or you can look here in trove and find regional stratigraphic columns and correlations we can find them per basin by country to make sure that you've got all the stratigraphic information at your fingertips here you could look at just that oalp9 block map here or you can look at uh, all the license information. Again, one click of a button. Get all the current and the historic license information by region, by country. And yeah, you can follow the progress in exploration, thinking and evolution. So what does Trove offer in South Asia? Well, this is our introductory page here. We've got maps, reports. We've got information on things like reserves, licenses, basins, and regional overview. We've got data tables, dashboards, introductions to all of the countries in the region, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Maldives, and Pakistan. And we've got all the information in the companies that are active in those particular areas. We've got information on gas composition, on unconventional hydrocarbons, on wells, and uh, these are all databases within a database. So very, very useful to find all the information in one place. Now, as an illustration, here's uh, information on seismic. So where is all the seismic data, you might ask? Where do I get it? Well, you'll find out here, the companies that have shot the data across all the region. And I urge them to make sure that their data is actually included within the Trove database. What does it look like? Well, countless examples are given in these sheets. Names, well, they can be a nightmare. So the same assets being we know by different names, the different spellings. There can also be typos. So here's an example here highlighted in the red circle. And just different spellings of this one asset and in fact, India isn't uh, quite as bad as some places, other countries, it can become a nightmare. There can be up to 10 different names associated with a single asset. You get an overview of India. In fact, you get an overview of all the countries in the database. You get to the legislation, the infrastructure, the exploration history, all a click of a button. You get individual assets here. You get Mutar West. You can see location, a map showing the structure, and a seismic line. Also, background information on what it found. Here's another series of assets. These are all off the East Coast. And numerous discoveries that have been made. All collated, all searchable, all uh, tabulated. You've got this particular asset here. You've got a structure map. You've got a reservoir log and you've got a seismic line plus information about what was found in this particular well. And finally, here's one PY1. You can see all the information that we have in Trove. If you wanted to find out about PY1, well, one of the companies will charge you quite a lot of money just to get an asset report on this single asset. Whereas with uh, Trove, you get structure maps, license information, well correlations, seismic sections, but all the other stuff in that listing here. For about $3 an asset, now around about two orders of magnitude less. It's company-wide access and it's uh, available for the entire globe. We see geoscientists and engineers and project managers, new ventures teams, all sorts of disciplines find valuable information within Trove. Now there's a reminder of what you get in Pi 1. How about that? That's effectively $3. You get lots of information on every field and discovery. Here's just a subset of what you find within the asset. You get lots on source rocks, on the maturity, on unconventionals right across the region. You get lots of information from maps. You can just browse these maps and surely there's got to be some inspiration here for geoscientists looking in the region. So you can find data quickly. And this Trove South Asia, it's an example of one of our databases which were included in the three months free trial you get all the data shown in this video on all the fields there's 481 of them and some 437 discoveries across india 
also Pakistan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, and Maldives. Three simple steps. Send us an email. Let us know you're interested. We'll send you a copy of our license agreement. Once it's signed, we'll try and get that database to you the very next day. So this can be a very, very fast turnaround. We try and make it as easy as possible for you to experience Trove because we know you're going to love it. Why do we say this? Well, because here's the data points that we have for our Trove South Asia. And you can see in terms of the number of assets we look after, the number of data points that we hold in our database, or indeed data quality, we can see that it's growing year on year, month by month. It's getting better and better and better. And so we're very, very confident that by the time your three month trial is up, we'll have already improved the Trove significantly. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. You know what to do. And uh, look forward to seeing you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.